Hi, and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create a tool that calls all the points outside the camera first. And I'm going to do this in VEX and using the camera coordinates. I know that a lot of people like using volumes instead, but I've had a few times when I've been working with large scale environment, wasn't paying attention, ended up creating a volume that ate up all of my RAM and crashed my scene. With this VEX solution, you don't have to worry about anything like that. The setup is slightly more complicated, but uh, we will make an HDA that you can reuse. Plus, it's very useful to know about some of the things I will talk about. So, let's do this tool instead. So, I'm going to have a null here. It's going to be the start of it. So, it's going to be in. I'm going to have a wrangle that is going to do the magic. And then I'm going to have a blast after. And then I'm going to have an out. So that's my incredible network. I'm gonna make a subnet out of this. Wait, let me color this. So, and then I'm gonna make a subnet. And then from this, I'm gonna make a digital asset. So let's do a create new. I'm gonna call this camera magic. All right, cool, create we want to have some parameters on it. So let's do that. I got a parameter. I want to point to the camera. So I need an operator path. I want to have padding. So I'm going to have a vector two and I'm going to call this padding. And I'm also going to call this camera. And then what else do I need? I want to have the distance as well. So let's do a distance. So I call it distance. All right, I think that is everything that we need. So apply. Let's just point to a camera for now. I'm going to go point to a camera. So there is that camera. And then let's go in and see what we can do in this wrangle. First of all, to, I want to get the camera. So I'm going to do a string camera. And then let's get that guy. Camera. So now we have that camera. Now we want the coordinate space from that camera. So we're going to have a vector campus like that. And then I'm going to use this command, which is 2ndc. 2ndc, it takes the position of the point we're at, and then it takes the device, which is the camera, and then it just converts that into camera coordinates instead. So let's do camera, and then I'm going to have just gonna have the point position and if we look at that actually we want to go here so we can see our points you will see let's just do temp equals to campus see here you can see the camera coordinates so what does that mean then what are the camera coordinates everything here inside of the first term is between zero and one so x value right to the left that would be zero and to the far right, that's going to be one. And the same thing with a Y value. So the top would be zero and the bottom would be one. Or actually it might be the other way around. I can't remember right now. But anyway, so what that means is that if you have either X or Y with a value higher than one or lower than zero, then you know that it's outside of the first room. So let's make an if statement. We can remove this guy. We don't need it anymore and we're going to delete that one and then we do if campus x is less than zero or we have a or campus x is higher than one or campus y is lower than zero or campus y is higher than one. If any of these happens, then we know we need to kill it off. So let's do it. Let's just do a group here. I could just remove the point here actually, but yes, let's do it this way. So I'm gonna have a group and then I'm just gonna do group kill equals to one. And then in this one, let's select the group kill you won't see anything because you're inside our camera first time. But hopefully if we go outside, no, something is wrong. 
So why is that wrong? Oh, it is kidding. Let's put the camera in a better spot so we can see a little bit better. So let's do, let's move it in a tiny bit like this. And then if we go out again, now you can see the shape of the camera like a little bit better. Cool. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to have some padding to it. So you can say like sometimes you have like a big object. So the object is bigger than the points, even if the point is outside the camera first time. If you have like something instanced on the point that is going inside of the uh, first room. So in that case, you can add some padding. So let's add a value here. And then we're going to read it in here. So I'm going to read the padding here. And we're going to have it as a vector 2. Because you can see we have like 1, 2. And then I'm going to call this padding. And then we're going to read the attribute. That would be a channel u, which is a vector 2. And then we have it to uh, and it's very simple. We just need to add that here. So then we can do if campus x plus the padding x. Oh, not the, not like that. I'm gonna do copy here. Campus x plus padding. I just for make it a little neater, and you have like a little parentheses here around this. And then for this one. We're going to have, if it's minus padding, and for this one, same here, plus padding y, and for the last one, we're going to have a minus here, padding y, and then like so, and here you go. Now we have this padding as well. So if I would do zero, you can see I have no padding. And then I can just make this wide. And you see, you see I get like all these extra guys on the side. See, same thing here. So you see it like this, it's easier. So yeah, there you go. So the only thing we have left now is the distance. We have this distance slider. Let's do that. I'm just going to do that under this here. Uh, and then I'll get the camera matrix. I'm going to do camera matrix, I do cam, and then I'm going to use this uh, command up transform. I'm going to take the camera. And now this is taking that camera and I get the matrix. In this case, I just care about the position. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have this distance camera position so and i'm going to use a crack transform and with a crack transform you can get the position scale and orientation by extracting that from a matrix so these first just have them zero and this number here that will say if you're going to have the position scale orientation and if you want to have that position you use zero and then you have a little pivot thingy here you don't have to care about and then you do cam so this should get, oh, I also need to declare this, of course. So now I have that. Let's get the distance. I get a float distance equals to, and then just use distance. And then we have camera position and the point. So now we just need to compare that distance to this value. So let's read that. I'm going to do float, and then we're going to call that threshold. And then uh, from this, we're just going to have that like so. And then from the threshold, we can just do this. If the distance is higher than the threshold, then we want to kill it. Let me do I group. So now all of them are dead because the distance is zero. So let's just get the distance up a little bit. If we put this to 100, there you go. And also let's just make it like a nicer parameter of this so distance. And here on the range, let's have that to like a high number. Or maybe not that high, like so. 
and now you can see it. All right, so this is very fast and very memory efficient. So yeah, there you go. Now you have a little tool that you can just use every time you need to do this and you never have to think about it ever again. I hope that you found this useful and see you next time.